Hey, this is Presh Tollwalker. The Putnam Competition is a famous and legendary annual math exam for undergraduate students in the United States and Canada. This is the time for the best of the best to shine. The test format is quite intimidating. There's a three hour session to solve six increasingly difficult problems. It's followed by a two hour lunch break and then there is another three hour session to solve another six increasingly difficult problems. Each question is worth 10 points for a maximum of 120 points. The median score is about one point, even though the students taking it are exceptionally good at math. This is an exceptionally challenging test and even solving one question is an accomplishment. So let's take a look at the most recent Putnam competition and the very first problem in the very first session. This was considered an easy problem. We have the equation 2a to the n plus 3b to the n is equal to 4c to the n. Determine all positive integers n for which there exist positive integers a, b, c satisfying the above equation. So let's start by experimenting with some values. The simplest case would be to take n is equal to 1. We end up with the linear equation 2a plus 3b is equal to 4c. You would think there would be a solution, and with a little bit of experimenting, the triple abc is equal to 1, 2, 2 is a solution. 2 times 1 plus 3 times 2 is equal to 4 times 2, which equals 8. So n equals 1 is a value for which the equation has a solution in positive integers a, b, c. But where do we go from there? At this point, I'll admit I would not have solved the question on the exam, but I want to present the way that I would have thought about it, and I will present the solution from some people who are much more clever than me. So the way I thought about it is I thought about the famous equation x to the n plus y to the n is equal to z to the n. It is well known that for n greater than or equal to 3, this equation does not have a solution in positive integers. This was famously a conjecture by Fermat in 1670, and it was finally proved in 1995 by Andrew Wiles, and it is shown commemorated here on a 2000 stamp in the Czech Republic. So we might look at our original equation and conjecture that for n greater than or equal to 3, there is no solution. We will suppose there is a triple ABC that is a solution to the equation. We will work to derive a contradiction. A common strategy is to suppose the three numbers ABC are relatively prime and then show they share a common factor. So let's begin by saying D is the greatest common divisor of A, B, and C. Define new numbers X, Y, and Z to be a, b, and c divided by this factor d. Let's see what happens when we substitute x, y, and z into the original equation. So let's begin by substituting x and y into the equation. So we have 2x to the n plus 3y to the n. Is that equal to 4z to the n? By the definition of x and y, we can substitute in. Now let's take a common factor of 1 over d to the power of n. This is multiplied by 2 times a to the power of n plus 3 times b to the power of n. But we know that since a, b, and c is a solution, this sum is equal to 4 times c to the power of n. This is equal to 4 times the group c over d raised to the power of n, and c over d is exactly equal to z, so this is equal to 4 times z to the power of n. So in fact, 2x to the n plus 3y to the n is equal to 4z to the n. If we have a solution ABC where d is our greatest common divisor, we can then derive another solution by dividing each of these by the greatest common divisor. Which means without loss of generality, we can suppose that a, b, and c are relatively prime. Their greatest common divisor is equal to 1. 
So with these assumptions, we will now work to show they share a common factor. So starting with the original equation, subtract 2a to the n from both sides. On the right-hand side of the equation, we can take out a factor of 2. Since the right-hand side is equal to 2 times some positive integer, we will have that 2 divides the left-hand side, which is 3 times b to the power of n. 2 doesn't divide 3, so 2 must divide b to the power of n. Since 2 is a prime number, this means that 2 divides b. In other words, b is an even number, and it's equal to 2 times k for some positive integer k. Substitute this into the original equation, and we will use the same strategy to show a and c both have factors of 2. So subtract the k term from both sides of the equation, and then divide both sides of the equation by 2. Notice the right-hand side will have a factor of 2 in each term. So 2 must divide a to the power of n, which means 2 divides a, and a is in fact an even number equal to 2 times m. So we have shown that both b and a are even numbers. This is going to imply that c is an even number. So we substitute these into the original equation, and we will divide both sides of the equation by 4. What remains is terms that both have a factor of 2. And notice it's very important we have the assumption that n is greater than or equal to 3 because we have 2 raised to the power of n minus 2. So we have 2 must divide c to the power of n, which means 2 divide c, and c is an even number. But we have now shown that 2 divides a, b, and c. This is a common factor, and that contradicts the assumption that the greatest common divisor of a, b, and c is equal to 1. So there is no solution for n greater than or equal to 3. It would be nice if we could simply use the same proof for n is equal to 2. But we have a problem in the term 2 raised to the power of n minus 2. If n were equal to 2, this term will exactly be equal to 1. So we will not be able to conclude that 2 is a factor of 2 raised to the power of n minus 2 multiplied by 3 times k to the power of n. So we cannot simply apply this proof to n is equal to 2. We have to prove it in a different way. So let's go ahead and do that. We will employ the same strategy. So we have n is equal to 2, we suppose there is a solution, and without loss of generality, we suppose the greatest common divisor of a, b, and c is equal to 1. We will work the same way by showing they all share a common factor. Let's see if they all have a common factor of 3. So let's take the original equation and let's work modulo 3. So anything that's a factor of 3 will be equivalent to 0 mod 3. So when we work modulo 3, 2 becomes negative 1, 4 becomes 1, and 3 becomes 0. So this equation, modulo 3, is negative a squared is equivalent to c squared mod 3. Add an a squared to both sides of the equation, and now let's just rearrange the last equation so we have a squared plus c squared is equivalent to 0 mod 3. Let's take a look at the squares modulo 3. 0 squared is equivalent to 0 mod 3, 1 squared is equivalent to 1 mod 3, and 2 squared is equivalent to 1 mod 3. The only squares modulo 3 are 0 and 1. So a squared and c squared each have possibilities of being equivalent to 0 or 1. So there are only four cases to consider. We have 0 plus 0, 1 plus 0, 0 plus 1, and 1 plus 1. But there's only one case where the sum of two squares will be equivalent to 0 mod 3, and that's when a squared is equivalent to c squared is equivalent to 0. That means 3 divides a squared, and since 3 is a prime, that means a is a multiple of 3. Similarly, 3 divides c squared, and since 3 is a prime, c is a multiple of 3. So let's take this conclusion, and we will show that b has a factor of 3. Subtract 
two a squared from both sides of the equation and substitute in. Now simplify this and divide both sides of the equation by three to get b squared is equal to three times four u squared minus three times two v squared. So clearly three is a factor of b squared, which means that b is equal to three times w. We have now shown that a, b, and c all share a common factor of three. But three dividing a, b, and c will contradict the assumption that the greatest common divisor of a, b, and c is equal to one. There is no solution for n is equal to two. So in conclusion, the answer is n equals one only. This is the only positive integer for which there exist positive integers a, b, and c satisfying the equation 2a to the n plus 3b to the n is equal to 4c to the n. What an interesting problem. Thanks for making us one of the best communities on YouTube. See you next episode of Mind Your Decisions, where we solve the world's problems, one video at a time.